Finally, I get to talk about Final Fantasy 16 on this channel. Also, before I start, just know that this is going to be spoiling the entire DLC quest since it's only three and a half hours long, especially the second icon you unlock after completing it. So, if you still haven't done that, leave this video, and if you want to, come back when you're done. The Rising Tide is the last paid DLC expansion for Final Fantasy XVI. Like Echoes of the Fallen, it takes place before the ending of the game. It follows Clive and the gang venturing to the hidden land of Mycidia after receiving word that the long lost Leviathan icon of the sea needs rescue. I absolutely love the story in this DLC. It's nothing too in depth, but the lore that's built up around Mycidia and Leviathan is actually really interesting. Everything from the side quests to the main story to the murals in the main hub area is meaningfully crafted and gives Mycidia and its people a sense of development in life. Shula as a companion was also pretty cool as well. Setting aside lore, Mycidia is beautiful. Instead of the dark and bleeding skies of Primogenesis, I get to feel like I'm at the beginning of the game again because the sky is blue and vibrant. The jungles and ruins of Mycidia are also brilliant as well and make Mycidia an intricate region. It's simple but impactful. Overall, really love this region. I do have one problem though and it's that they advertised the DLC as being Jill centric but she didn't even play a major role here. All she did was deduce that the witch in Mycidia was previously a dominant of Shiva. That's it. I was expecting her to be much more important, but she accompanied us for one mission and then just kind of fucked off for the rest of it. This wouldn't be as big of a problem if it wasn't for the fact that she already didn't have much development in the main story itself. Another big problem I have with the DLC is Ultima himself. My biggest question before the DLC dropped was, are we gonna get an alternate ending? I mean, Ultima's plan entirely hinged on Mythos obtaining the powers of all the icons, so it's going to be a pretty big plot hole if Leviathan is a part of the equation. You'll probably be displeased to hear that the question wasn't answered. In the main quest, after you beat the Timekeeper, Ultima just says Leviathan was stained by the hands of man until Mythos cleansed it of its human corruption. This doesn't directly answer the question of why Mythos doesn't require Leviathan to become the perfect vessel, though. It also doesn't help that there's no alternate ending. Also, as hype as it is to play with Ultima's iconic abilities, it begs the question, why the fuck does he just give it to us? This also doesn't help his plans of creating the perfect vessel. In fact, doesn't it kind of work against him? Like, Clive has proven multiple times in the game that he's not going to willfully become Mythos, yet this doesn't deter Ultima. The best part is, Clive just fucking takes it and blatantly admits he's not giving it back. To sum this all up, the quest was fantastic, but there were still some problems that I wished were solved, but weren't. The Rising Tide's biggest new feature is the addition of two new playable icons, Leviathan and Ultima. Leviathan will become a bona fide arm cannon shooting explosive water at all your enemies. Leviathan's iconic feat, Serpent's Cry, lets you summon a sea-splitting serpent that deals great range damage. Ultima neutralizes the elemental aspects of your magic and makes you do pure magic damage. You can summon Ultima's wings and use them as weapons, and his iconic feat, Ultimate Demise, deals incredible AoE damage. There are also a slew of quality of life changes, such as adding icon loadout slots, fast travel to quest givers, and adding extra cutscenes to side quests. Leviathan as an icon is actually pretty cool. It's incredibly strong and like Odin and even Ultima, it feels like it can be used on its own. Some of its abilities deal great will damage and the raw damage it deals is great as well. Some of Ultima's abilities like Voice of God feel a bit lackluster, but overall it's really fun to play as him. In short, both of these icons were great additions. Leviathan's boss fight in the quest was incredibly challenging, but also great. Everything about it is incredibly grandiose, especially the way the fight ends, and the Angry Seas portion, where he's just summoning multiple maelstroms and riptides, was a great section that gave me a huge adrenaline rush. However, the biggest problem I have with it is the DPS check. It just feels way too difficult for its own good. I'm lucky it only took me 2 tries instead of 10 or 20, but I only beat it through sheer luck. I understand that it's supposed to test your mastery over Efreet's entire kit, but it still feels just a bit unfair. If you fuck up even once, you might as well restart from checkpoint. It's basically just this meme. The Rising Tide also brings with it a new endgame roguelite mode called the Kairos Gate. Here you must explore 20 circles of hell and after each circle you can swap out your iconic abilities or get permanent enhancement upgrades and temporary boons to aid you in battle. 
Every five circles, you have to fight one of four icons. Ifrit, Primed Benedicta, Primed Kupka, and Odin. For what it's worth, it's pretty fun because it is more Final Fantasy 16, but it suffers from the same problem that Ghost Runner 2's Rogue Runner.exe mode did. I managed to beat it all on my first try. Now that I got everything I need, I don't really have much of a reason to go back to it. Other people will probably return to it to try out different combinations and get a higher score, but I personally won't be. This update was amazing. Obviously, it's not without its faults, but the new playable icons refresh the combat, the main realm of my city is vibrant, colorful, and complex, and the story adds enough to still make it worth your time and money even if there were things I wish were answered and or fixed. The Rising Tide is available for standalone purchase or as part of a DLC pack that contains both this and Echoes of the Fallen for $25. Purchasing either the Rising Tide or the Expansion Pack will get you some extra Final Fantasy XIV themed bonuses. The first is the Cortana weapon. The second is two new Orchestrian roles for the Hideaway, those being Torn from the Heavens and Through the Maelstrom, again from Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XVI is currently only available on the PlayStation 5. However, Yoshi P has confirmed that a PC version of the game is releasing this year. Here's everything we know about the PC port. Before I leave, I want to say that I'm close to starting the editing process for part 2 of my God of War Ragnarok analysis. It took so long to get this far because I've been busy playing Rise of the Ronin. I got the voiceovers completed and just need to replay a bunch of the side content for footage. I'm expecting this to take a month and a half on account of having to make a Stellar Blade review later this month as well.